And then they said, if we have already got an order subject to exceptions and modifications, and in that, my lord, they omitted many parts of our constitution because they wanted it to come in their own constitution, like legislature. So the legislature, my lord, is actually established under the J and K constitution. The High Court of Jammu and Kashmir is established under the J and K constitution. So they said, we will take the 54 order as Indian constitution as applied to Jammu and Kashmir. And that is how, my lord, the Jammu and Kashmir constitution was born in 1957. The Jammu and Kashmir constitution on 26 1 1957 recognized the application of the provisions of the Indian constitution under the 54 order and also had separate provisions including my lord the autonomy in respect of framing of laws. And this is quite important, Malot, because this is the way two constituent assemblies as a product of their fruitful energies through now the constitution speak to each other so my lords even though the word tempo temporary occurred in the marginal note the resolution of the constituent assembly of jammu and kashmir my lord which i'm speaking and i'm putting it within quotes was that the Constitution of India must apply with these modifications. But more importantly, they said, Article 1 and Article 370 must continue. I'm talking of an affirmative resolution, my lord, of a constituent assembly. It is not a matter of any non-formalistic expression and it is that formal resolution read with the JNK constitution which finally will not fall up for your interpretation. Malot, what is significant is the two constitutions, I said, speak to each other. Which is that provision through which they speak to each other? It is Article 370. So, my Lord, Article 370 was not a repository of untrammeled power of application of constitutional provisions. No. Article 370 was the medium by which the Indian constitution could be applied and they could also act in terms of their constitution. And my lord, here lies what I call as a dual obligation. The dual obligation, my lord, is to be discovered, one, in the words of section 147 of the Jammu and Kashmir constitution. And the second are the words 
in Article 370 itself. In Section 147, my lord, one of the laws which could never be touched by the Legislative Assembly ever in the exercise of its amending power was the provisions of the Constitution of India as applied to Jammu and Kashmir. This is, my lord, in some contrast. And again, I am deeply grateful to my Lord, the Chief Justice, who, again, in a thought-provoking observation, referred to Article 372. The power of adaptations. And in that, your Lordships will notice, the President can bring it in accord with the Constitution. But the legislature of the state, which is competent, can always pass a law, repealing, modifying, wearing it. Your Lordships recollect that provision in the Constitution. This is not there in 148 at all. So 148 treated the provisions of the Indian Constitution as sacrosanct. And my Lord, what did we under 370 offer? Under 370, we offered the ability to frame a constitution and the ability to offer our constitution subject to special exceptions. Your Lordships have not seen those exceptions. When your Lordship sees those exceptions, your Lordships will appreciate that this is not a simple constitutional order. This is an order which is a product of bilateralism. And my lords, our constitution, by its very nature, has so many checks and balances that bilateralism can be seen as at the imprimatur of our constitution. So, my lord, the only exceptional provisions where you can have unitary action are few, far limited, and conditioned, my lord, by a temporary purpose. Having said that, my lord, may I just take you to a few documents so that I quickly make the point? Yes. Sir. I also want to say one thing, my lord. I heard Mr. Sibyl cite the decisions on Article 370 yesterday. There was one more, just as Nariman's decision, which needs to be cited. But, my lord, I want to just sum up and tell you what are these decisions quintessentially saying. Justice Bhargava, in Sampar Prakash, notes that the Constituent Assembly did not want to abrogate Article 370 and instead permitted its continuance. When your Lordship see that sentence with the resolution of the Constituent Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir, your Lordships will be left with no manner of doubt that that is the correct legal position. The judgment in Damu, which was cited by Mr. Sibyl, is a case, my Lord, where there was an amendment to the Jammu and Kashmir constitution by the assembly, which was called the Sixth Amendment in Jammu and Kashmir first. And Jammu and Kashmir said, Sadri Riyasat will now mean governor. And therefore, my lord, Article 367 was amended to bring it in accord with Jammu and Kashmir constitution. That is the judgment of Justice Sikri. But more importantly, my lord, Justice Sikri refers to this very judgment in Keshavan and the Bharati. 